sitting back, just you and the, you, you, you and the fellas are slapping high fives or something. But we're attaching these things to worship, to the worship of the Son of God, His Father, all that. That's right. Surely it should be found in the Scripture. Mm, sure. And if it's not in there, where you get it from? <laughs> right. That's what you need to be asking yourself. All right, let's get into it. John chapter 1. Start at verse 25. Verse 25. And they asked him, and said unto him, Why baptizeth thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? They were asking John the Baptist, What are you, if you're not Christ or Elijah, one of these prophets, what are you doing? Come on, brother. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water. I baptize with what? With water. Uh -huh. But there standeth among you whom ye know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoe lashes I am not worthy to unloose. John, like, look, the one I'm talking about, y'all tripping off me. The one I'm talking about, I'm not even worthy to untie his shoe. Not even worthy. Come on, brother. These things were done in Bethel, Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptized. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. Easter Bunny. The Lamb of God. See that? Come on. Which taketh away the sin of the world. So John and the Spirit knew <laughs> that that's the Lamb of God right there. Mm -hmm. That which taketh away the sins of the world. He knew that in spirit. That got to be him right there. Right? Come on, bro. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me. For he was before me. I think that how is Christ before John and John was six months older than Christ? Right? How in John and the Spirit saying, look, he was before me. How when he was on the earth six months before? See, contrary to popular belief, the Messiah, we read about in the Bible, Christ goes back to the beginning. Right. He was with his father in the beginning. He came in the flesh of what you call the New Testament. That's right. right. He been there. Been there. Let us make man in our image, and right. being as like that, he holds the title of God. He's That's not right. the most high. He's the son of the most high, but guess what? That's still God. That's right. All right, come on, bro. Verse 30. Yeah. This is he of whom I said, I read that, didn't I? 31. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. To who? To Israel. That he should be revealed or manifested to Israel. This Lamb of God, that's major right there. The Lamb of God was revealed to the Israelites. All right, come on, brother. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. So John's old mission was to baptize with water until the Lord was revealed to Israel. Come on, brother. And John bare record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not. Right. But he that sent me to baptize with water, uh -huh. the same said unto me, Upon whom thou see, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him. And remaining. Right. See that? And remaining on him. Come on. The same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. So John said, Look, it's a better baptism coming than what I'm doing. One that you see the Spirit descended and remained, meaning the Lord sealed him, that's the one that baptized the Holy Spirit. Come on, brother. And I saw and bear record of this. I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. See, not the movie you just went and saw that just came out. The Son of God. The Son of the Most High we're talking about. Right. Come on, brother. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and was looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold who? The Lamb of God. So now we know we can identify the Lamb. Right? The Lamb in Egypt was a foreshadowing of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the Most High. That's right. And even John in the Spirit who was older than him in the flesh six months ago, he was before me. That's the Lamb of God right there. Right? right? Now why is this not being taught? Today it's just all superficial, get money. Most of these holidays are geared toward getting your money. That's right. But ain't nobody talking about the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Why not? Mm. All right, let's get 
at 1 Peter, brother. 1 Peter, chapter 1. Brother, we'll start around 13. Read that on up. Showing you what went down in Egypt was simply a foreshadowing of better things to come. That's right. And we don't ever look down on the Lord redeeming our people or by Egypt. That was major. See that? And just like he plucked us up out of captivity before, he'll do it again. We either believe it or we just playing around with it. All right, let's get this. Remember, lamb without blemish. First Peter. First Peter 1. Yeah, First Peter 1. Start around verse 13, bro. First Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Lamb and Yah or the Easter bunny. If you can't find the Easter bunny in the scriptures, then what are we doing? What are we doing? Can it possibly be a ritual to another God? Mm. And if you found out it was, would you be willing to repent and follow the Lord or order? That's all it comes down to. We can't make nobody do nothing. That's right. But in yourself, like, like when he told uh, Peter, blessed are thou, flesh and blood, they revealed that to you. Right. In spirit, he knew the Lord gave it to Peter, told him, man, that's the Son of God right there. That's the Christ right there. So in spirit, once you understand, hold on, man, what I've been doing, I've been spending my tires in the mud. Mm. Uh, dying Easter eggs and dunking the Christmas trees ain't got me a hyphen. Mm. Huh? Not one check more I'm going to get into the kingdom. What am I doing? And we are down here for eternal life, salvation. Ain't that what it's all about? That's right. Most of us claim we saved already and still partaking in rituals that have nothing to do with the Lord. Mm. <laughs> That has to do with your worship. You see that? All right, well, let's get it. Let's get into it. First Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Gird up the loins of what? Of your mind. Your mind is up here, right? Then yes, you know it's a spiritual warfare. Be ready. Gird up the loins of your mind. Come on, brother. Be sober. Be what? Sober. Sober. Meaning vigilant. Aware of your surroundings. Don't be physically drunk or spiritually drunk. There are a lot of people spiritually drunk. La La Land, it's all good, it doesn't matter. When you read that in the Bible, it's all good, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's in the scripture. It's all good, it doesn't matter. Just believe. You know better than that. That's not in the Bible, no word. Come on, bro. And hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shah. Didn't that say hope to the end? Mm -hmm. They say be sober, gird up the loins of your mind, and hope to the end for that grace, man. That we'll be revealed unto you. All right, come on, brother. As obedient children. What kind of children? Obedient children. So that means you're obeying, right? What are you obeying? If you obey some, some rules that have been given. Right. Right? Man. right? Should we say Fonzo? Man. Command it, son. So as obedient you, you only be deemed obedient if you're obeying the rules. As obedient children. Come on, brother. Not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. See? Mm -hmm. Ignorance meaning without knowledge. You didn't know. So not fashioning yourselves to your former lust, which you used to do before you came into some understanding. Right? You let that go. You let that go a long time ago. Bunnies don't lay eggs. Huh? And nobody don't dug into no proof. What, what am I doing? Right? So he tell you right here in this verse 14, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust. And your ignorant things you used to do because you didn't know better. That's right. Alright? Don't fashion yourself after that. Come on, brother. But as he which hath called you is holy, right. so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Holy. Two definitions for it. It means to be set apart. Right. One means to be worthy of reference and praise. That ain't none of us. That's right. Breathing, right? And the other one means totally dedicated to the work of your God. That's right. So that's the holy you need to be. If not, you're wasting your time. What are we doing? No, oh, okay. Come on, brother. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Mm. And if you call on the Father who without respect of persons Judge it according to every man's work. Oh, I thought what about my works. Hold on. Bro. I was with y'all before I read that. Hold on. That's a without respect of persons, judges according to every man's work. Come on, brother. Pass 
the time of your sojourning here in fear. So knowing that the Lord don't matter if you're Israelite, Gentile, male, female, huh? King David or not. Huh? The Lord gonna judge everybody according to their work. What you've been doing, you will be rewarded for what you've done. Right. Either right. blessed for doing what you're supposed to do, or cursed eternal damnation for not doing it. You got some work? Yeah, like uh without respect the person, like you can go slay Moses before he even got started. Mm -hmm. See that? Moses almost got killed going to Egypt. That's right. To redeem our people. Right. And it was his wife, Zipporah, right, that knew it. So in other words, she had to know the commandment. That's right. Right? Hold on, you tripping. You about to get us all whacked. Did the commandment and threw them tiles at his feet. Called him a bloody man. See that? Without respect of persons, meaning it don't matter. Israelite, Gentile, male or female, if you wrong it off, the Lord is gonna handle you. That's right. If you right, you will be blessed. All right, come on, brother. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold oh. from your vain conversation received by tradition from your father. You wasn't redeemed by silver and gold. News break, 28 bankers, six weeks. Y'all heard about that? Yeah. 28 bankers, CEOs of banks, six weeks have been committing suicide for the past six weeks. Man, the last one they shot him in, 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 in the daylight, didn't they? Yeah, one of them got ran over the parking lot. But, but, but majority of them committed suicide. 28 banks in six weeks, CEOs, JP Morgan, all of them. They've been killing their sins. So your money, you know what I'm saying? What they know, you ain't even figured out yet. You may be on the brink of financial collapse, right? You still busy trying to get the money. And the people that print the money killing them sick. Right. So you wasn't redeemed by blood, I mean, uh, by gold and silver. All right? Received by the vain traditions of your father. All right, come on, brother. Verse 19. But with the precious blood of Christ. Blood of who? Of Christ. You got the blood. Come on. As of a lamb without blemish uh -huh. and without spot. Mm -hmm who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested these last times for you. See that? They say Christ is the unblemished lamb, mm. without spot, right? Unblemished, meaning flawless, and this was foreordained for the Lord to set the foundation of the world up. So who picked y'all Passover lamb? Hmm. Hey, who picked the Passover lamb? Hey, who down here? Who down here picked the Passover lamb that we gonna be eating on the Passover? No, 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 Well, who picked the lamb of God? No, no, no. Huh? Oh, sorry. See that? So it ain't like you need to be like, okay, which lamb y'all pick? Are you sure it was unblemished? Are you sure it was right? Uh, you know, no, lamb already been selected. That's right. He been foreordained or elected before the foundation of the world. Right. Uh, come on, bro. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Faith and hope might be in who? God. Come on. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart, fervently. See what I said right there? Said right. Fervently. <laughs> you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit. Right? Love the brethren fervently. Come on, brother. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, uh -huh. but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So you're born again by what? The word of God. Huh? I mean, you're not doing the same things you used to do. You're striving daily to get better. You're putting away the don'ts and you're trying your best to do the do's. All right? According to the word of God. All right? Come on, brother. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. Uh -huh. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Uh, all right, let's get 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. So we got the lamb without blemish, and we redeemed by his blood. You see the same verbiage that went on in ancient teaching. Unblemished lamb. 1 
1 Corinthians 5, 6 to 8, brother. Unblemished lamb, blood. We're going to get to this leaven in a minute. That's right. Same thing, same type of word play. Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Behold, That's right. the Lamb of God. Right? And see, some have a problem with us accepting Christ when we say He's God, but we're not calling Him the Father. Right. 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 But they ain't questioning Exodus 7 and 1, mm. where He told Moses, I'm going to make you a God to Pharaoh. Mm. And Aaron, Aaron right. going to be your prophet. Now, how you ain't got a problem with that, but you got a problem with the true Lamb of God? Huh. All right, let's get into it. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6. We've identified the unblemished Lamb, the blood, the picking of the Lamb. Let's get into it. Again, the Lamb of God or the Easter Bunny. That's what it comes down to. It's either one or the other. And once you find out what you've been believing may be off, thank God for the repentance. That's right. You can repent and come on back and do what does save the Lord. We all been off in some way, shape, form, or fashion in our lives. You see that? And it's a fight day as soon as you come into the truth. I mean, it, it, the fight don't stop. It heightens. All right. All right. See that? All right. That's why he said, girl, it belongs in your mind. That's right. And be ready. Always be sober. Meaning be aware of what's going on around you. Be aware. Don't be in la-la land. The Lord wasn't in la-la land. It's all good in the flowers and the bees. It's just all <laughs> lovely today. The Lord wasn't. Oh, he had work to do. He was serious out here. But still is, all right? Well, let's get to this. First Corinthians 5. Verse 3, 6. 3, 6 to 8, bro. Your glorying is not good. Mm. Know ye not that a little leaven, leaven is the whole lump? Mm. A little bit of wickedness that destroyed this whole church body. That's, That's right. Leaven will leaven the whole lump. All right? Come on, brother. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, mm. that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Christ is called our Passover. Our Passover is about the Son of God, Christ. Right. So ain't no uh, Daniel Solomon going to kill 10,000 lions. You know what? Um, and then Judah going to run around with the basin with the blood and then try right. to go up blood up all your doorposts. Right. That was a that was a, a similar to or a foreshadowing of Christ coming being the Lamb of the Most High. Us being up under his covering, his blood, that way you don't uh, suffer the eternal damnation of the hell of uh, Lake of Fire. That's what that's about. Can we see that before? Yeah, back it up. Let's get it. Yeah. Verse 4. Well, I mean, let's, let's go to 1. Let's go to 1. Let's go to 1. Let's go to 1. Let's see if he was talking about them glory. Verse 1. Yeah. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. Mm -hmm. Such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. That one should have his own father's wife. One should have his father's right. wife. So when you go into Leviticus, the 18th chapter, cursed be the man that uncover his father's neck. That's right. Meaning you just lay with your mama or your stepmom. And those who say this fornication ain't even named among the Gentiles. Right. And he even ain't even doing this. Right. So he's talking to us as a people living right. in these areas right now. Right. Y'all laying, this is a church body right. that Paul set up. But they were dealing with a lot of things. Uh, uh, idolatry, this right here, men taking their father's wives, mm -hmm. eat food, sacrifice to idols, uh, women running their mouths too much, a whole bunch of stuff. That's, that's what the chapter 14 is about. The tongue speaking. Yeah. A lot of things going on in the church of Corinth. You feel me? So he told them, look, man, this thing ain't even named among the Gentiles. Men are laying with their father's wives. Mm -hmm. That's fornication. That's an unlawful sexual act according to the law in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Leviticus the 18th chapter, Leviticus the 20th chapter, going to the fornication. That's right. That's one of them. Mm -hmm. All right, come on, brother. Verse two. And Reuben did that. The first born of Israel, mm -hmm. he laid with his father's concubine. Mm -hmm. That's how he lost the birthright. All right, come on, brother. And ye are buffed up. And ye are what? Buffed up. And and they not even sorrowful about that. Right. Mm -hmm. As a body out here, they did it. It's all good. Turn blind eye to it. It's cool. Puffed up. Right? Come on. 
and have not rather mourned that he that has done this deed might be taken away from among you. See that? People running around acting unlawful within the church body supposed to be put on blast. Yeah. And you don't turn a blind eye to it like it's all good, whatever. Right. And then you look up and then this whole thing of eleven wickedness is at an extreme. It's, right. And then when it's wickedness, it's practicing at that point. Mm. That's something you do on the regular. It's like second nature to it. Come on, brother. Verse 3. Yeah. For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present, concerning him that had done so this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, to deliver such as one unto Satan. Hold on, hold on. To deliver who? To deliver such as and one unto Satan. Such a one unto Satan. What Paul was saying right there. He was saying, look, this brother, whoever he is, this took his father's wife, and then he said, to deliver such a one to Satan. Come on, brother. For the destruction of the flesh, mm. that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. All right, so we're right. What that mean, biblical? Right? What, what example do we have about delivering somebody over to Satan? Someone that has tasted of this. They know better, and yeah. they turn their back on it and went away from it. Yeah, but then to say that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So how, how, how is it that somebody can be delivered to Satan? Say somebody was up in there doing that, right? So what, what does it mean to deliver someone to Satan? For the destruction of the flesh that their spirit may remove. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. What did the Lord say? Now trip off this. When the Lord sent the disciples out, right? He told them. He said, whoever don't hear your word or receive it, do what? Well. He does off your feet, right? That's right. Then he told them what? That it'll be more tolerable. For Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than it'll be for that city, that person, that house, whatever it may be. Right? So all that Paul's saying is take your hands off somebody at that point. That's right. Shake the dust off your feet and keep it moving. If it's the Lord's will, they'll recover themselves right. and come on back around and repent. If not, they will the path to destruction. Right. They will be destroyed. Sorry, I'm not saying it fucked up. Yeah. They were unrepentant at the time. I said it. He was unrepentant. See what I'm saying? All right, let's finish it, brother. Verse 6. Yeah. Your glory is not good. Know ye. Know ye. Know ye. Yeah, know ye that. Know ye not. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole month? It's the question. It's the feast of unleavened bread, right? That's right. He said, well, don't you know that a little leaven will leaven the whole lump? Don't you know that? So that same cat who had his father's wife, yeah. if you got him around and doing that, he's going to corrupt everybody else. It'll be, it'll be thought amongst everybody it's all good. That's right. Yeah, they ain't the Bible and all down there, but man, they saw a type of wickedness going on. That ain't, what, that ain't what we want to be labeled as. All right, come on, brother. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Come on. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Let us what? Keep the feast. So we say keep the feast. For those That's who right. say you can't keep it outside Jerusalem. Corinth is more closer to Greece than Jerusalem. And he say what? Keep the feast. Mm -hmm. How, though? Come on. Not with old leaven, uh -huh. neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, uh -huh. but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So get all the malice and wickedness about your membrane, your mind. Don't be at the Lord's feast with malice on your mind or wickedness. There's a penalty for that. Mm. Hey, brothers, get them sisters some chairs right over there. It's a lot of open spots in here. You know, we may have to tighten it up a bit. With unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Right? right? All right, let's get this. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 11. Amen. What? Break down the of malice. Huh? Malice. Anger. Rage. Right? Somebody who we ready to kill. Malice. Feel me? If you ever felt that way towards somebody, or you had to pass over and got that feeling about somebody in there. Say it again. Like, if you got a beef with somebody, yeah. up in here, don't show face the fast. Get that, get that clear before you come down. It can be a whole situation that somebody ain't turned it up to, you know, your mind. Yes, yes, yes. It can be old.
old, and the only reason it's old is because you let the sun set. The sun ain't gonna set on your right. That's right. In other words, you supposed to go get that right. Best way you can. You feel me? That way, at least your conscience clear. I don't hate you, brother or sister. Ain't no malice or on my heart. You feel me? That way, you don't be destroyed for it. See what I'm saying? Because who was at the Passover with Christ with that same mindset? Mm. You might as well be Judas, then. Because you were so the Lord out. You at the feast with malice and wickedness in your heart. You might as well be Judas, then. See that? Oh, hey, here first. Here first. You can't be up in here feasting. You feel me? Everybody partaking in the feast and then, right? I really want to kill you. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> can't be like that, right? So you need to get that right first. But any time, even in the world, if you can right any type of wrong, go ahead and write. That's right. If you got an opportunity to write any type of wrong, write the wrong, man. You feel me? Today, we become so puffed up to where. I'll never forget that. And I'll never forget that. And the Lord forgive us all the time. All the time. You feel me? Like if it wasn't by His mercy and grace, I know myself, I would be dead. Mm. Off the map, quick, years ago, quick. You feel me? So always keep that in mind. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we try to hold certain things over people's heads and think. What you say, brother? What it say, brother? Give us our debts as we forgive our debts. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, it hurt first. You can't be up in the Passover and you see a familiar face, right? Hey, hey, shalom, sister, brother. But I, I really hate that. Yeah. You feel me? Like, if this wasn't Passover, I'd have stole off from it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for real. For real. Some people be like that. You don't, you don't know what be in people's mind. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. Some people got that wrath so heavy on their mind, their next step is murder. That's right. Right? Christ said, if you're angry at your brother without cause, you're already guilty of murder. Yep. Mm, already guilty of it. Without cause. All right, let's get 1 Corinthians 11. So if you got a chance to write any wrong in the world, go ahead and write But don't be in the Passover and somebody up here, you got a problem with Right, and, and even if you got a problem with what we're teaching, don't bring it out there or whisper it to somebody else. Bring it forth in class. Here we family. Family don't fight. Not if we do, not supposed to, we get it straight. You know how we gonna be in the same household we got beat. Alright, y'all, All right. next. First Corinthians 11, 23 through 34. We just showing you the, the shadow, the similar to the foreshadowing of our the Passover lamb, the blood. Unleavened bread, how all that was a foreshadowing of Christ. That's right. Right? And we keep Passover with the understanding that Jesus the Christ, uh, the, for the brothers in Hebrew, Yahweh Shah of Nazareth, is the Passover lamb of the Most High, foreordained before the foundation of the world. Mm. If you got that understanding, you can eat with us. That's right. Right? Purge out the old left. You got some, brother? Yeah, uh, I want to make sure we hit the Leviticus 23 of uh, yeah. you. Yes. In there. Okay. For, for the new people who okay. will be attending Passover the first time, okay. they prepared already, not just find out on that day. Okay. You know yeah, we do Leviticus 23, 1 through 8 about the Passover, the feast of the Lord, right? The Lord has all holy days, what you call holidays today. They already, everything's in the book already. Problem society has, we've gotten away from the book. Everything, how you conduct, how conduct yourself amongst your brethren, your significant other, your children. Everything is in the book. Today we've gotten away from the book and think we've outsmarted the Lord. Mm. <laughs> and wonder, and wonder why society in the condition is in. What they say, we, we've evolved. Yeah, we've evolved. We, we've grown past that. <laughs> All right, let's get it done, bro. 20. First Corinthians 11. Brother, we'll start around verse 20. And then we're going to read it out. Again, we're going over the Lamb of God or the Easter Bunny. And then, and then you know, Brother read earlier about the Easter, the pagan origins of Easter. You feel me? You read about that a little Google. You ain't even got to be no deep researcher to find out Easter is of the devil. The rituals of Easter. The one time Easter pops up in the Bible when you look the word of it being Passover. That's right. The ritual. Yeah, read that real quick. This is Easter out of, out of the Bible concordance. You Easter. Read Passover too. That's enough. Okay. Pasha, P-A-S-C-H-A. P 
past, past Passover. Passover yeah. rendered Easter in Acts 12.4, mm. but correctly translated Passover. See that? See? Easter's not in the Bible. One time it is, all you do is look it up and just, even if you didn't look the word up, the verse before it say, those were the days of unleavened bread. That's right. That's Passover then. Right. You see what I'm saying? So that's what it takes for us to stop being simple in the script and just get to it. Understand all the answers are in the Bible. Right? Have faith to know that and know that the Lord is delivering you the answer if you got the patience to receive. That's right. I'm just about to give up and stop praying. The Lord ain't answering me. <laughs> You be hearing yeah. somebody had to have it. Yeah. Bill? Yeah, I'm seeing it's four back, so I'm going to go back. 17. Let's get it done. Verse 17, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For mm. well, first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you. Uh -huh. And I probably believe it. Well, I'm saying it's all type of twigs and sets and divisions right. up in the body of Christ, right? They right. say, you know what? I probably believe it. All right, come on, bro. But there must also be heresies among you, mm -hmm. that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. Mm -hmm. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's supper. See? This is not the okay corral. Right. And your whole mind said, ooh, I can't wait to taste that lamb, and mm. I'm about to get full as a tick. You be hearing that. Right. Coming off people's mouth, leading up the fast. over. you like, bro, look, this ain't, this is not the uh, buffet. Even though we're going to eat and enjoy ourselves, this ain't what this is about. It's people in it. It's a feast. Right, come on, brother. What kind of food going to be at? 21. Boy, eat it. Everyone taking before other his own supper. And one is hungry and another is drunk. See that? If you don't, if you don't guard it right, if you don't have the right mindset, people are going to be gluttonous and drunk. <laughs> We've seen it before. <laughs> We've seen that before. <laughs> see that? You look up and it'd be the brother just there to drink him some wine. And at the end of the night, he all plastered. We look, bro, look, we got new people coming in, people understand what it is. God, know your limitations, right? Everybody watching, know your limitations, man. Right? That's right, and know your reeking. Right. <laughs> if that other wine is around, right. know your reeking. Come on, brother. It's verse 22. What? Have you not houses to eat and drink in? Question, don't you? This is all about eating. You got houses to go eat and drink in. Come on, brother. Or despise ye the church of the Most High? And shame them that have not. Uh, what shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? Uh, I praise you not. Come on. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. So Paul say, what I got from the Lord, I delivered to you. This church of Corinth, I got from the Lord, I delivered to you. So Paul was delivering commandments. What I got from the Lord, I gave it right to you. Come on. That the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed to a prayer. Right. And when he had given thanks, he prayed and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. See, the same night he was betrayed, he took bread and said, Look, do this in remembrance of me. Mm. Today, you got people saying, Well, I'm into his birth and I'm into his resurrection. Look, we know the Lord was born and we know he resurrected. That's, that's right. That's not nothing to even argue about. What did the Lord command you to remember? Though? There you go. That's what it come down to. Did he say remember his birthday and give everybody gifts? Did he say remember his resurrection and go on Easter egg hunt? What did he say? <laughs> All right, come on, bro. Verse 24 again. And when he had given thanks, he drank it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This do in and remembrance this of me. do in remembrance of me. Come on. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Mm. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. The day they had you every first Sunday, right? But without the historical understanding, you would never realize this was Passover. This was the preparation for the Passover once a year. 
He said, as often as you do this, remember me. Right? Remember the sacrifice, everything the Lord laid down for us. Remember that. That's what you're supposed to be remembering. That's right. His death, not his birth, not his resurrection. We know the Lord was born, and we know he resurrected, and we know he on his way back. But where did he command you? Alright, come on, bro. 26. Yeah. I want to add something right there just to understand that this came for the first time. That he said, you know, we know we get together for the Passover. So what we just already read about what not to do, we come together for the right reason or the wrong reason. And it shows in here already, he said that some of you only come to eat, some of you only come to drink. But he said it right there himself, as often as you do this. Right. So it means we come together to do this, but he said, remember me. It's not commanded to remember him. He's saying, when you're doing these things, remember me. Yeah, yeah but that wasn't advice either. Mm -hmm. That wasn't advice, you feel me? It was, which would make that a commandment. Lord right. give commandments. Because people were doing it wrong. Right. Just coming to eat, coming to drink. There you go. There you go. Come on, brother. And he says, for as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, right? He do show the Lord's death till he come. Mm -hmm. you show him? You remember the Lord's death till he come. As often as you take part of that bread and drink that wine, right? We gonna do that that night. We gonna do this right here that night, right? Do it in remembrance of the Lord, the sacrifice he laid down for us, which is major because when nobody else did it, nobody else. The line would have been real short. <laughs> so this is basically key of communion from the standpoint that you always eat and drink it. Yeah. It has to be a special. Yeah. Exactly, right. exactly. The communion of God is Passover, the Lord's Supper, right. Passover. That's what it comes down to. And that's not one once every first Sunday. Right. right, this was once a year. The Lord said, when you're doing this, remember me. All right, come on, brother. Verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, uh, who? unworthily, uh. shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Uh. But let a man examine himself. Like Judas, he was guilty of that. Let a man examine himself, though. In other words, self-check, right? That's right. Come on. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Come on. For if he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Damnation is in the Bible, huh? Mm -hmm. Lord cussing? <laughs> no, man. He's right there. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth and drinketh damnation. So if you there and you ain't got the understanding or under the vibration that this is all about Jesus Christ. That's right. I am the Lord. And you just here to eat and drink, you can be eating damnation on yourself. And that, that should frighten everybody. That should say, you know what, let me make sure I'm straight before I come up in here. And let me explain to anybody I'm inviting down here. Look, this is what this is about. Don't eat damnation to yourself. Listen this up, is one of the main scriptures you go to. Look, you know if you eat this unworthily, you're gonna be eating damnation to yourself. Come on, brother. 29 again, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Down, not discerning the bro. Lord's body. Not discerning the Lord's body. You just think it's a meal. Come on, brother. For this cause. For what cause? For this cause. Uh -huh. Many are weak and sickly among you. Uh -huh. And many sleep. You see? Those that was eating unworthily, you already said. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you. Because they've been eating the Lord's Passover on work. Mm. And then it said, and many sleep. That means dead. Mm. Many are dead. In other words, the Lord will get you straight. Straighten you right on out if you are eating this unworthy. Right. See that? He said, many are weak, sick, and dead among you. Because they've been eating unworthy. Let's make a comment. I'm going to read I used to go to church. We all be, bro. Come on. How can you get East out of any of this? Bro, the only time, only time is even mentioned, and most most people in that doctrine don't read the King James Bible anyway. So even if you go to the NIV, Acts 12 says Passover. That's right. The only time it's mentioned, it is Acts 12, and when you look it up and go to the verse before it, it means Passover. Right? So you won't get the, the whole Easter ritual out of none of this because <laughs> the Easter ritual is not in the Bible. That's right. It's nowhere in there. No more than the Lord sanctioned you to bow to Christmas. It's not in there. 
happened, and Peter was in prison. Come on, brother. Verse 31. Yeah. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. You know what he said? If you get yourself together, examine yourself, check yourself, you should right. be judged. Right? Come on. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. The Lord loves those, he chastens those he loves. Come on, brother. Wherefore, my brother, we can come together to eat, tarry one for another. We come together, eat, wait for one another. Right? Come on. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home. Uh -huh. Then he come not together unto condemnation. But you don't come together for condemnation. So what is he saying? You can't eat. He ain't saying you can't eat. He's saying if that's on your mind to come eat and drink and this is just an okay corral, mm, you could be eating damnation on yourself. So examine yourself. What are you really here for? To show appreciation for what the Lord did for us? Or you just here to eat? Right? <laughs> We get it all the time. Some people come down here just to eat. Now, this is out here to eat a sandwich or something, a chips, a drink, huh? Sit through some scripture and then get on the boat. <laughs> what are you really here for? That's what the scripture is saying. That's right. And this one's so serious that if you come in lollygagging thinking it's the okay corral, the Lord say, for this cause many a sick, weak, and a dead among the dead. Come on, brother. And the bread, well, again, and if any man hunger, let him eat at home. Then he come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Mm. See that? We got the understanding. That's right. Find your fruit. Hey, so what's, what's, uh, so what's eating that word, brother? So we don't eat damnation on ourselves. What, what's eating that word? We're doing what? Eating just to feel their stomach, right? Not coming down there understanding that this is appreciation for what the Lord did for us, right? No, oh, girl, we finna go down there. Yeah, they been talking about this. I said, why? Never ain't no lamb. Well, oh, girl, come on down. I'm telling you. Young <laughs> brother smoke that lamb. It tastes good. I guess I'll come. Okay, uh, what time to start? <laughs> uh, okay, I might be down there. I don't know. Right. Then you look up here at Big Bird in the front door. <laughs> I'm down here with so and so. Uh, let me in. They say, invited me down here. <laughs> Not down here discerning the Lord's body. This That's right. about the Lord's sacrifice that he laid down for us. And we ought to be appreciative of it. And take it serious. And Why would you? Go ahead, brother. And y'all know what the worst part of eating is. We had brothers down here eating with us and then believed and, and believe that Christ was a blemished lamb. Right. Because that, that's the first part spiritually. They believed that Joseph was his natural dad. Then there's a problem because Joseph had a problem with who was the baby's dad. <laughs> How you gonna eat the Passover and he got stain on him in your mind? So that first, so the mind ain't even sober when it come in here. It's like, well, they believe that I just never get that off, but I'll break them off one day. Yeah. <laughs> and that, you know what, brother? Ain't damnation unto himself. Because the, the understanding of the oil, the little oil that the brothers had, is gone. Right. Like fattish. Same thing, man. And they let you know they ain't never play around with it. Make your, but the scripture tell you, make your call and election sure. That's right. All right, know what you're getting yourself into, man. This is serious. Go ahead, bro. We was just, uh, uh, me and one of the brothers that were just come and get ready to come back over to the class. Uh, uh -huh. The whole witnesses stopped. And they, they had a little pamphlet. Yes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they would, it was something to invite us to the pass over. Yeah, it's like invites. But they didn't even know, we, you know, if we need to trip them out for Christ or who we are, they just said, hey, come on, we got some stuff we want. Y'all come on, y'all want to come to the pass over? Now, we could have been just going and, and eating the fill out. Right, right, right. We exactly. had eating for damnation and not even knowing it. You know, so people are out there trying to just bring people in and not tell them what's going on in the script and right. what this feast is for. Oh, be trying to, be trying to brag to their people because they know their people have rejected what they believe. Right. I'm telling you, dog, come on down here. Y'all tripping. Y'all know what y'all do. Look, it shouldn't right. be a competition thing. Right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? We ain't competing with nobody. For what? Right, right. right? If we wrong, pull the script, show we wrong. Yeah. You feel me? And then we'll do it your way. Right. But you know how you know, they go. You got something, Gary? Yeah. Uh, when I 
I used to work in Gateway Bank, I met her customer, you know, she was a real friend today. So we talked one day, she talked about her church, of course. And so she said that her church, and she invited me, of course I didn't go. She said that her church does Passover and Easter. And I'm like, how is that possible? I said, how is that possible? And she couldn't explain it. And she was offended because I could explain it. And she still didn't understand why. I didn't Hold it down, y'all. Right, right. I can, I can do both. It sounds like some compromising going on. Right, see that? Right. Let's get this Hebrew chapter 6. But you know you did good though, make her explain. That's right. She can't explain it, hey. Well, when you find out I have some compromising. <laughs> you feel me? Just let them work. Hey, if you don't know, just say you don't know. Right, right. Go ahead, sister. that he's reading them now, maybe there will be a change of heart that the spirit, like we just read, maybe when you have to, that would be delivering one over to Satan if they tell you flat out that I'm going to do that. But the spirit, maybe they'll hear something that'll say, you know what? I ain't never heard it put down like that. But the opportunity is, is to eat this word and then when you tell them, look, you're going to eat damnation to yourself. Because what's happening here is the mindset. The majority of us in here coming to eat. A lot of us that know the truth more than they know. And we've been eating unworthily, a lot of us, y'all. We have to understand that's why we may have a sickness on us. You know, that may be going away. So that's why it behooves us to make sure you explain it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you clearly understand you're going to... What we're going to put down, you're going to have to make a choice of how you want to do this. Some will come and they'll go right back to their old ways. You know, but that's not on you. Right. right. That's not explain. on you. you got to be explained to the letter. If they choose to jump off the roof, then that's on them. Right. You have to be explained. Them. Explain it to the letter. Wherever you invite it, explain it. You know you need damnation if you continue on the path. Right? This is how serious the feast of the Lord is. Like, explain to them. Now, if they decide to still come, and like, you can't make them not go to church the next day or the next right. day. Feel me? If they do, hey, you see that you're on cost. Feel me? Like, hey, you see that you're on rich. That's what that's about. Somebody else asked something. 
Nobody? Let's get to it. Uh, Hebrews, Hebrews 10. 28 and 32. Hebrews 10. I got six out there. Hebrews 6 out there. Hebrews 10, 28 and 32. Hebrews 6, 4 through 6. What are we to be doing? Thus saith the Lord. What would Jesus do? What was he doing? Mm. He never had. Look, he wasn't even into the, the tradition of his own people. They weren't even pagans. True about that. The Pharisees and them weren't into paganism. Right? It was into their own tradition. And he didn't even keep those traditions. How much less the traditions to another God, man? All right, let's get this. Hebrews 10. The book of Hebrews. Chapter 10, verse 28. He that despises Moses' law will have without mercy under two or three witnesses. See what the Bible's saying? Despise Moses' law, you die without mercy under two or three witnesses. A lot of people are scared of them Old Testament judgments. Mm. Right? Like judgments that we are not administering because we under grace, like uh, killing idolaters, adulterers. Homosexuals, various children, you feel me? Like we are the grace, so we're not administering the judgment. That's for judgment day. See, so I'm like, woo, that old, thank God we end up under that Old Testament, huh? Come on, bro. Verse 29. Uh huh? Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worth who have trodden underfoot the Son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant? Wherein he was sanctified and holy thing, unholy, unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the spirit of grace. He, the Hebrews 10 and 29 say, if you thought Moses' punishment was something, mm. wait till you get a load of Christ. Mm. <laughs> it says it's a sore punishment coming. Because you took the blood of the covenant where you were sanctified and counted it an unholy thing. Right? It's like, ah, oh, I could have died for the nation of Israel. That's your vibration today. Oh, man, I wake up. Yeah, this took a few licks.